The Death of Christ Was an Act of Unparalleled Humility by Robert Gessner. It was an astonishing act of humility that the Eternal Son, Creator of the Universe and the Everlasting God, should become a man born of a baby in a manger in Bethlehem. But he stooped even lower than this. He was even more amazing that in his humility, he actually took the place of the servant while he was here on earth. But he stood even lower than this, the very depth of his humility was demonstrated when he submitted to death, even the death of the cross. And being found in the appearance of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2.8 The cross represents the lowest step of humanity, or humility. The cross was the place where he put criminals or transgressors of the law. They were also two other criminals led with them to be put to death, Luke twenty three thirty two. Jesus Christ was obviously not a criminal, for he is the only man who ever lived who never committed any sin. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin, nor was guilt found in his mouth, First Peter 2, verses 21 and 22. Upon hanging on the uh, cross, he took the place of the cursed. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, Galatians 3.13. This act of dying on the cross was carried out by our Lord Jesus Christ because it was the will of God, his Father. Without Christ's death on the cross, God's marvelous plan of redemption could never be fulfilled. So Christ was willing to take the lower place, uh, the lowest place possible in order to accomplish his father's will. This is the opposite way of sinful human beings. We not only want our own way rather than God's, but our own way is seeking to exalt ourselves to the highest station possible. We want to be recognized for our high achievements and we seek the applause of men. We seek our own will, which is always the way of self-achievement and greatness. This is always accomplished by the defeat of destruction of others. Christ took the lower place, which was for the salvation of others. In the creation of man, God designed that man the highest order of his earthly creation should govern this universe. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, and the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you should visit him? For you, for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beast of the fields and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. Psalms 8, verses 3 through 8. Yet man uh, obeyed, yet man, obedient God, and was lifted up in pride. The whole history of mankind demonstrates one man after another trying to elevate himself to the master's rule of the, this universe. 
but he completely fails. No man has ever been able to subdue and control the universe. He has brought nothing but death, disaster, disease upon all of mankind. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for whom all are all things, and by whom all are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering, Hebrews 2, verses 9 and 10. By stooping to the obedience of death on the cross, he has achieved God's purpose for this sinful earth. Through death, he has won the mightiest victory of mankind that has ever or will ever be achieved, victory over death itself.